Hello folks, it is me, I'm Biggie, and I'm back, and this is Let's Play Arcanum of Steamworks and Magic's Obscura. And uh, this is the, millen not the Millennium, the Multiverse Edition of Arcanum, which has been recently patched, um, and by recently I mean December of last year or something like that, but anyways, this game... I loved, uh, I've been talking about it on stream a lot, and I wanted to at least test the waters and showcase this game so that you guys can actually see if this is going to be something you want to see in the future or not. And I know a lot about this game because this is one of those seminal games from my childhood. One of the games that uh, determines my, um, kind of like my tastes in RPGs in general. And the reason why this game is so amazing, first off, it had a, an amazing character building system. That's one thing. And I think it also has one of the best world building uh, options available as well. So that being said, I wanted to just jump straight in so that you guys don't get to stare at this screen for a long time. You could pick a couple of the characters that they uh, set things up for, but um, we could probably just want to create a new character. The screen's a little bit um, dithered here, but that's because we're using a lower resolution, a higher resolution than it's supposed to. Um, first things first, I'll need to switch things to English. And um, there's a couple of uh, things that you might notice already. Uh, first off, there's uh, gender male and female. Um, this game dis differ uh, entries between male and female characters only by the um, the fact that uh, female characters have a um, better with, uh, withstanding of pain, exhaustion, and toxins. So they add to constitution but reduce in strength. So uh, that's the only difference between the male and female characters in this game. Just to acknowledge the minor difference between different genders, but the real cool thing is the amount of races you can pick as. Uh, humans are actually ones without any modifiers, and you could have you could play as a dwarf uh, with increased strength and constitution. Um, you could play as elves with uh, better dexterity, willpower, um, and. Uh, you could even play as half elves, or gnomes, or halflings, or half orcs. There's so many races that you could play as immediately, and they have different boons and uh, like pluses and minus for each uh, of the different uh, races available. Yeah, but the long story short, this game is super customizable at this point, and uh, you could play so many different things so many different different ways and one of the things i wanted to just show off as well is that you could make custom portraits for example if i cycle through all the portraits here you might see someone relatively uh, unfamiliar here but yeah the custom portraits are available in this game we could name the characters as uh, myth as well and um But the thing about um, this is that not only there are custom uh, characters, but there's also backgrounds. And if you can cycle through all the backgrounds here, you'll see that there are things like, for example, race-based snake handlers, increases poison resist, but has a penalty to beauty, uh, apprentice to a blacksmith, increased strength and repair skill. You know, that's actually a pretty cool start for myth as well. But... Um, if we cycle through all of these um, ones, there's actually a, cha uh, a a way in the game to create custom um, backgrounds. Like Myth's background here as a genius inventor, he has increased intelligence, increased uh, guns and explosive and smithy, increased in repair, known for his love for ale and women, so he's increased uh, charisma and beauty, for example. And yeah, you could type in and just make different backgrounds for each character and you could actually even make adjustments 
for the backgrounds of each character uh, so that they are, well, they're able to actually uh, are built, be built by different ways. You could even cheat significantly and just give all your characters huge uh, boosts everywhere, but there's no need to do that. This game is quite generous on uh, the different ways you can actually build the characters. And here is the screen where you can spend ages and ages uh, because there are different stats that are explained here already. Uh, there's um, alignment, so measure of good and evil. And over here is the real important thing, which is the magic tech meter. The scales displays magical and technological aptitude, which uh, if you're more inclined to use technology, for example, uh, then your character becomes more and more resistant to magic. And vice versa, if your character uses magic, uh, technological stuff tend to fail around you. And basically, this is just the way the game uh, deals with the world building. Because the world building is in the age of steampunk, where uh, in, the, in the age of steam, or the industrial revolution, where man has suddenly uh, rapidly uh, industrialized and used uh, steam engines. Um, and in the world with magic, uh, they're in the world of magic, they're actually having a lot of trouble maintaining an equilibrium. And um, people of the older races, like elves and stuff, are finding it harder to live because um, technological advances is actually having an impact on magic. Whereas back in the old days, there's an equilibrium between uh, magic and technology. But we'll see things as they uh, progress here. But you could build your characters so many different ways in this game that it is just, it's ridiculous. Like, for example, you could like uh, make your character uh, a melee character uh, with uh, thing, uh, skills like in dodge and other uh, related uh, fields. We could make a character uh, have thieving skills with backstab and pickpockets and prowling and spotting traps, for example. Um, there's also things like special uh, social skills, uh, things like gambling and haggle and heals and the ability to persuade. You could even make your character uh, completely uh, a persuasion character and you could just go through the entire game just being able to persuade your way through and not having to do any fighting. And that's actually one really cool way of playing this game as well. And the higher your persuasion, the more likely that you're going to be able to use to get to get followers and stuff. Lots of different ways of playing this game. There's also the uh, technological skills like uh, repairs and firearms and lock picks and arm trap uh, disarming, like trap disarming. That this, like you could use it to disable traps and stuff, but that's just the tip of the iceberg, because if you can see here, I'm gonna look have you look at the tech and spell colleges. There are a total of, wait for it, 16 different spell colleges. Um, with five different spells for each. And you could actually spend t uh, a lot of time going through all these and learning a bunch of spells here. Uh, there's like... And you could... There's like tons of spells that you could actually learn and just go through. There's like different elements, spatial spells, like uh, necromancy, like so many different spells that... Uh, your characters can actually learn here. And uh, if you want to make a magical uh, type character. And the requirement for learning the, each of these spells are just um, different stats. Like for example, if you wanted to uh, learn more spells here, you need to have more willpower, um, among other things. Whereas instead of um, willpower, if you want to go into technology, 
and there are a total of eight schools of technology uh you need intelligence which i think is like a really nice um uh bit of detail here because you don't require a lot of um the intelligence to cast magic you require willpower which is the uh way of them differentiating between different stats here um it's a really really cool way of um like uh making different things uh, mean different sense mean different things um like uh there's the difference between beauty which is the physical appearance and charisma which is your ability to persuade people and it impacts the game differently so already this is a lot of things that we uh, want to be able to explore into but i'm spending too much time explaining and let's just get things started shall we um myth i do want to turn him into a gun toting dude but the importance uh, of uh because um i had him start with a gun just like uh, in the game here and gun users are pretty strong in this game as well but in the beginning guns are relatively uh weak and it's hard it's going to be a while before you are actually able to make guns that impact the game a lot so what i'm going to do is i'm going to make him uh gun toting smooth talking dude and the reason i want to make a character like this is because usually characters with high charisma and intelligence uh get better dialogue and get a lot of the uh characters or followers that you want to see but that being said i think that we've accelerated enough so the first thing you want to get started off with is uh adding maybe one rank of dodge and melee because this is always useful for characters uh, when they're starting off you do run out of bullets and ammunition in this game so uh giving him uh, a little bit of stats in that direction uh is going to be nice um i'm going to also uh pick up a little bit of firearms um so that we could like improve the firearm skill but for us to be a firearms expert requires a little bit of uh perception so i'm going to add one lot of perception right here um but i'm going to actually you know what um we're not going to go into firearms yet or do we want to go into firearms immediately you know what let's just go ahead and just pick up uh one rank of firearms and um we'll also need a couple of different things here uh we're probably not getting the uh, gunsmithy up anytime soon um the uh, reason being is that we'll need we're going to focus on followers that will have the advantage of uh uh, those uh, disciplines here um we'll also need to what do i want to do here let's uh yep a lot of these uh things will actually need we want to get electric l uh, light and charged ring at uh like electrical layman at the uh, two levels at the very least but um the other thing that we want is uh herbology healing styles will be very important for the early game i'll read uh, just one rank of that and um we'll also think if we want to add more stats in any other areas but yeah i think that's pretty much it i think um we can't add another rank in firearms yet without adding perception 
So let's go ahead and, and add one rank in reception. Um, like so. Or, yeah, let's just do that. And, yeah, we'll just stick to that right now. That's going to be all of our points there. And if we move forward, we'll get to the shop. And um, the items here aren't super important. Uh, the things that we'll need here are going to be... Uh, well, we want one of these rings. Copper rings are actually very useful. Uh, and uh, so are lock picks. Um, since we picked one rank of uh, herbology, uh, we're going to have tons of herbs, so we don't have to worry about that. We'll also want a nice strong weapon to start things off with. Um, Okay, not that. Um, one of these rapiers will actually do well because it has a uh, high speed. Or one of these swords might do as well. But yeah, I think I'm going to grab one of these. Uh, we have 178 coins left and a, and a gun. And we also have choices of... Uh, dresses and uh, shirts and other forms of armor. Picking these up aren't too important right now. Um, we'll also probably want... I'm just going to grab... Oh, well, like these boots will uh, be the best boots we're going to have for a little while. Going to pick that up. We have 131 uh, gold left, so let's just spend the rest on bullets. The bullets are worth a um, hundred, no, a four gold each. So let's do some math. We'll get 25. That should be a hundred gold, and. That gives us a revolver uh, with 65 bullets, which would be plenty for the early game. And then we'll switch over to uh, melee once we are uh, able to. But I think that's going to be pretty much it for now. Let us move on and watch some cutscenes. We are on above the IFS Sever, which is a blimp, nice and high above the clouds. Yep, so we could um, imagine the kind of technological age we're in. Late industrial uh, era where blimps are a thing. It's still a form of uh, light. And right at the age of flight here. So if it was equivalent to people would be either late 19th or early 20th century. And you can see some, uh, like the inspiration behind the whole lot here. The graphics aren't super impressive, but I think it was pretty cool for the time anyways. But yeah, biplanes flown by ogres. That's the kind of world that we're in right now. And oh, off it goes. Blowing up the IFS Zephyr. And down our airship goes. But that's not the end. It's just merely the beginning of how things are going. Oh. Ring, and you will know what need 
needs to be done. <laughs> choice but to do as he said no oh. so few of us left that the work is almost finished and then the evil oh, you can't imagine he's he's coming back to destroy everything everything and everyone wow And with that, random dude shows up in a cloak. I can't believe it. I mean, you and, and then the Zeppelin and, and the fire. And the author says that, do you have any idea what all of this means? Oh, by the gods, man, I almost died here. Didn't you see the crash? You speak. I, I mean, of, of course you speak. He fumbles in the pockets of his robes. What the bloody hell are you talking about? Out with it, man. I am at a loss here. I, I, I don't quite know what to do. I, I mean, you are the... Oh, of course you are. I mean, you do know who you are, right? Of course you do. What, what, what sort of brainless, half-shaped question is that for the... the, uh, the uh, Am I being unclear? Your babbling is incomprehensible. Please forgive me. I, I'm making a bloody mess of this whole affair. My name is Virgil, sir, and I'm new to the Planari religion. Uh, your religion, and I... Oh, 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 wait. I uh, hereby dedicate... No, no. Uh, commit my life to the living one. I, Virgil, am at your service, sir. All right. He says as he kneels down in front of the ground, in front of you, then hesitates. Yep. Uh. Yeah. Right. You may uh, uh rise and uh, serve me, loyal Virgil. Listen, sir. I may be new to the Panari, but that doesn't mean that this morning was my first sunrise. Are we clear on that? I can see that you're as muddled about all of this as I am, and I don't appreciate being made a fool of. So keep that up, and I will tell you where you can stow that living one rubbish, uh, sir. And it's like, fine, just tell me what this living one is all about. This one's probably more appropriate for a myth. Uh, so, yes, yes, yeah. of course. You see, your thing, I, I mean, the, uh, the reincarnation of, uh, uh what's his name? I, I can never remember. And, and I, I'm always getting mixed up with the other fellow, the, the bad one. You, um, well, you know how all of those old elven names sound the same. <laughs> uh, I don't think I'm getting the gist of it, old boy. Yes, right. Uh, just give me a moment here. You, you see, the Panari, that's the religion mm -hmm. that was formed around the things that he said. I, I mean, that you said. Oh, forget it. Let, let's start at the beginning. Or this beginning, since there is a lot more that came before this. Mm -hmm. You are the reincarnation of a powerful elf. Who the Panari worship and whose name is uh Okay. What the powerful all powerful elf am I reconnected from? Yes, uh the name. Oh wait. I remember something. It is written in the scriptures. The living one will live again on wings of fire. No, 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 wait. I think it says reborn on wings of fire. Hmm. Oh, blood and ashes. Why do elves always have to be so damn cryptic? Yeah, the picture, the, the scriptures speak of a dying gnome and a ring. Hmm. I don't know about the ring, but this business about the evil one returning. Uh, as I've said, I, I don't know a whole lot about the Panari prophecies, but I think you were supposed to return and fight someone evil. Ah, uh, bloody hell! I should know more of this. You don't seem very well versed in the scriptures. Blasted all! There's a damned altar around here somewhere. 
Look on that if you're so bloody smart. Uh, esteemed living one, sir. <laughs> Look, if I'm as new to all of this as you are, I thought this was all allegorical until I saw you crawl from that flaming Zeppelin wreckage unscathed. It seems that Panari were right after all. Well, this whole the Panar like this whole living one thing is a bit tired, don't you think? You said that, not me. Look, I'm no fanatic, but I can't deny what I've seen with my own eyes. That altar is just southeast of here. I think it might explain a few things. If you'll just come to Shrouded Hills with me, then you can speak with the elder Joaquin. He will know everything, and then you can make your choice. I suppose it can't hurt to search out this elder Joaquin. Southeast. You'll stop by the Panari Shrine on the way out. See if it makes any of this any more clear. We should look for any other survivors before we leave then. What do you think? Agreed. But yeah, that's the beginning of the whole thing. This is Virgil. Uh, and we're Myth. At level one. But we could actually uh, look things up over here. And pick things up. Uh, unfortunately, this game is very dated in terms of uh, what could be and couldn't be equipped. Uh, up like how to drag and drop things, I mean. So, yeah. Over here, you could take a look at things here. Old silver ring, initials GB are set in relief upon its face. And the words P, Skylars and Sons are inscribed on the inside of the band. Okay. Alright, so let's just grab this right here and put it on ourselves this copper ring also not very useful at the moment but i guess putting it on will actually be beneficial to us at this point here and as well you could also put uh, different items in different slots in your tool belt here like for example you could put your lock pick right yeah <laughs> okay this is going to be a little bit hard but you could place a lockpick right here, and you could use it to pick locks, uh, among other things. This passport is from a man named Preston Radcliffe. But yeah, that's just the gist of the whole thing for now. But I think I've spent enough time uh, setting things up. And let's uh, actually get into gameplay uh, next time. So... I'd like to use this chance to thank all my members first. Apilux, Randomanta, Serflot, Vel, Doug Bolden, Raphael, Vega, Chapa, and RL. You guys get to watch all of this stuff early. And uh, yeah, you basically uh, get some new badges and emojis to comment uh, on these videos as well. So thank you guys for supporting me that way. Otherwise, if you enjoyed the video, like the video and um, subscribe if you want to see more of my stuff. Click on the bell notification icon to get notified for whenever I go live or I upload new stuff. But that's going to be it for now. Uh, this is me, I'm Biggie, and I'll be back next time with more gameplay. But yep, it's me, I'm Biggie, and I'll be back. See you guys in a bit. Bye for now.